Hello and welcome everyone. Andy Bryan here from The Soul Pathway and today I have the pleasure and privilege to interview Samantha kazaranoff Hawk from soundheals.co.uk and Samantha has an incredible journey and story which we'll be sharing with you all today and for those of you who haven't tuned into these shows before I interview spiritual individuals and change makers from around the world to share their inspiring journey to, in many ways, success, but more so their spiritual journey of awakening and transformation. And Samantha's one of those journeys, which is really quite a phenomenal transformation in terms of the work she does today. But for, before we jump into your journey and story, Samantha, tell me a bit more about yourself and the work you do today. Uh, I am a sound healing practitioner, I'm a shamanic practitioner, and I work with crystals in all the modalities that I do. Uh, I work one-to-one -one with individuals who have um, uh, physical pain, emotional pain. I work in voice remediation for people who have lost their voice for some reason or they may have had operations. I work with people who have stage fright and they have a lot to give of themselves and they get on stage and they go. So I work with them. Fantastic. I've had a stage fright myself, so I know how much of a, an important part of it's our journey terrifying. it is. <laughs> So let's jump into your journey and story because this is what we're here for today in terms of really allowing people to connect with you and your work and really show the transformation that you've gone through yourself. And the start of our spiritual journey and what I regard as our soul pathway is our old self. The stage one is our old self. So tell me a bit more about your old self before you began the journey of spiritual awakening and the work that you do today. It was a long time ago, so it was an old self. Uh, I am the child of immigrants who came to the United States after World War II, and uh, I didn't learn how to speak English until I went to school. I spoke Russian and French at home, yeah. and I felt like a complete misfit, complete misfit and uh, I got very ill and I got more and more ill and found myself in hospital and near death. Yeah. And uh, I did survive to, uh, uh, to come back from being above my body and watching the distress of my family and the doctors and I healed the pain of that misfit situation uh, by learning how to play piano. And piano became everything for me. It became the sheath, the cocoon yeah. against the bullying and the inability, really, of other children to understand my background because it wasn't yeah. anything like theirs. So I would say the old self lasted through school. Yeah, yep. Uh, it was a difficult time. So it's interesting you had a spiritual experience at that time anyway, but it was, a, it was a purging of you in terms of finding yourself through those times as well, would you say? I would say um, I had to I had to begin anew I learned to speak English in the hospital <laughs> excellent <laughs> excellent <laughs> so as we move through our journey as we move through our spiritual path we have soul awakening experiences and our soul awakening experiences is very much connecting to our spiritual self and our true soul essence and it sounds as if you had somewhat of a spiritual awakening experience back then when you had that near-death experience and hovering above your body. But was there another soul awakening experience that truly enlivened you? 
to your true Indeed. self? Um, when I was 17 years old, uh, and this is in the 60s, um, people were doing a lot of drugs and it was, oh, let me tell you about how, you know, I had this trip. Well, I wasn't yet into that. And I didn't know what anyone was talking about. So uh, one day I uh, lay down and I was quite, quite unwell. So I, I thought, I'll just take a nap. And I was in the tunnel and I was speeding along. And as I speak with you right now, I can see the stones. Yeah. I can see the curve of the tunnel. I can see the stones. I can see the rooms on either side. I could yeah. check out the rooms, but I knew I can't. I didn't want to waste time going into them. Yeah. And I came after a long period of time to a door. But yeah. I was horizontal and I was bodiless. And I was connected with this silver cord. And what I was connected to was that initial portal through which I came into the tunnel. And it took a long time to open the door from that position because I had no leverage. Yeah. But the door opened and I saw a city of light in front of me. Yeah. And then I had to make the choice. Do I actually venture into the blackness towards the city of light or do I come back through the portal, uh, uh, the door? And um, so I tried to, I tried going towards the, towards the city, but uh, I was turned back. And I came back through the tunnel and uh, came back through the portal into mm -hmm. the room I started out with. And I said to people, is that what you mean? Is that, is that, what, the, is that what LSD yeah. does? Is that what <laughs> plant medicine is about? And they said, no, no. And I thought, oh, there I am. Again, I'm outside yeah. the main street. And um, so I stopped talking about it. For a while. But, but it yeah. did lead me much later mm. to working as a shamanic practitioner. Fantastic. When asking you about this experience, you obviously you went through. How would you say it differed from from your near death experience when you were younger? Was it very similar in many ways? Would you say? No, very different. The one that I had when I was ill um, was in the same room I had been, but simply being out of my body. Yeah. The one I had when I was seventeen and uh, having an out of body experience, I felt that. I had gone into a different dimension. I hadn't, I was not asleep. I, uh, and I felt, well, I guess both of them, I was awake. But in the second one, I felt that I had really gone somewhere else to a different state of being. Fantastic, fantastic. It's amazing, isn't it? And I've, I've had an, a similar experience of myself when I've, I've, gone outside of my body and it was a bizarre but incredible experience it's beautiful isn't it those it's that moment of bliss in those moments isn't it it's a strange feeling and such a feeling of oneness with everything with yourself Definitely. with your uh with the life you've left behind with the moment with the future it's just being in the universe it Definitely. is an amazing feeling so the interesting thing is we come back to now, don't we? We come back to now and in this moment in our, the world that we live today, the life that we lead in terms of our 3D world, you could say. But in terms of coming back to that place, we have to in some ways come to terms with some of the experiences we've gone through. And often it's because others around us don't have these experiences. So I like to regard this as a, a fa our phase of self-inquiry, 
where we're inquiring about our experiences, inquiring about ourselves and what we've gone through. How was that for you in terms of, you know, returning back to self? Uh, it wasn't all that difficult, but it was a parallel stream. Mm -hmm. I was brought up by a, a wise woman from the Caucasus in Russia yeah. uh, because my parents were uh, working. And she taught me a lot about nature and about uh, falling into the sky through a puddle and uh, casting a circle. So as I went to university and as I studied politics, uh, I had two, two paths, which I was... Uh, following simultaneously and when I could I would go and sit in nature and I would reconnect with all those devic exercises and energies and then I would go back and um, my self-inquiry came after I had uh, done a lot of work in um, re uh, peace resolution studies in America, and I was working for a think tank. Mm -hmm. And a uh, moment of truth came when I realized this was not the way yeah. to peace resolution in the world. This is a military institution which had hired me for my political analytical skills, and um, I had to find another way. So I then went to Oxford University to study uh, more peace resolution and really to study causes of war and causes of unrest. And I was guided away from that, even at Oxford. And I realized, no, this isn't going to work. And um, I decided to try something completely different. Uh, I began to work within the Northwest London community uh, with immigrants uh, who didn't fit into the society. And I worked with music. And when I had my uh, out-of-body experience as a child, the way I healed it was by learning to play piano. And so that was another parallel stream. So I brought the musical training I had into play here and um, I started working with members of these communities who were excluded and I was healing their pain through music Fantastic. and this this was the path and forget about politics and peace resolution I was working yeah. in the here and now in the place where I was living with mm people who were completely displaced. Some of them didn't speak English. And I thought, well, I can help with that. I know what that feels like. Yeah. So that was, that I think was a tremendous shift yeah, in what I was, what I was doing, what I was thinking. And it was a stratospheric fall into uh, a much more modest uh, lifestyle because I wasn't making a lot of money. But it got me interested in working with alternative modalities and I started looking at shamanic practice and mm. I took a course with Leo Rutherford and it changed my life. Fantastic. And it's interesting you mention obviously that shift because it's a, uh, a shift of old self to to new self or shifting your consciousness into connecting with what's truly enlivening your soul in many ways. 
yes, and I felt that I had I had been creating my reality uh, and that I was putting on one mask after another, after another, after yeah. another. And finally, I didn't have to have a mask, but yeah. that was an illusion as well. But Definitely. our identity exists within this creation of our personal reality. And when you shift, as you say, from the old self to the new self, lots of things fall away. Mm. Friends fall away. Yeah. Um, perspectives fall away. I used mm. to think this way, but maybe not anymore. <laughs> and um, so it. it's, it's, not, it's not such an easy thing. In a way, it's liberating to have the shift. But Definitely. because you lose so many of your masks, but yeah. you also have them kind of in reserve so that if you encounter a situation where one of them might be convenient, you just yeah. slip it back on. And it's a, um, you walk in several worlds simultaneously, yeah. I think, where you carry those realities Definitely. with you and that really brings brings us on to the next phase anyway the phase of transcendence because we shift into that new self and, and live you know place of consciousness but our phase of transcendence is very much what joseph campbell describes in in the hero's journey in, in regards to the road of trials but i call it the the phase of transcendence because it's our physical journey our emotional journey and also our spiritual journey coming together as we learn, we grow and transform. So how was your experience and your phase of transcendence as you shifted and you raised your consciousness and transcended within yourself? I would say I developed gradually a different way of relating to people, to everyone. Mm. I became much more open. I stopped relying on social markers uh, and try to reach that core self yeah. in everybody I was meeting with every day. So I'd meet with the core self of a two-year-old and uh, that was way open and I'd meet with the core self of the mother and that might be really tight Close. and yep. closed um, my own relationship with my children became more open and uh, less reliant on um, school and um, other, uh, other ways of seeing your children. Yeah. Um, I related to my children in a way that worked best for us. Yeah. And that was very satisfying. And I, that carried over into my teaching and it carried over into my piano, into my piano performance and into um, the way I related to my environment in a larger sense in my community. Um, and I realized everybody could do this. I realized I wasn't special. I just, uh, I just had, I, I was me. And that Definitely. was the transcendent moment. Fantastic. And what I, I think is interesting about your phase of transcendence as well is, um, I know you mentioned to me, you studied at the Juilliard School of Music. And so you've yes. got that formal, incredible formal education there. But then you've done your sound healing and your shamanic practice. And um, would you say bringing that together helped you really transcend to those different levels of consciousness as well? I would say that uh, taking the course with Leo Rutherford in shamanic practice, followed by working with Stuart Pierce in the College mm -hmm. of Psychic Studies on um, 
Egyptian mystery rituals and the Angels of Atlantis. Uh, those two courses changed my life. Excellent. And I looked at I looked at other courses and took quite a few. And then I found Simon Heather and the College of Sound Healing. And I just stepped into what felt like home. Excellent. It just was fantastic. I thought, I am in the moment and I'm <laughs> doing the right thing. And um, mm. I actually found myself in the first exercise we did mm. um, in two places at once. I was in Love the it. class with Simon and I was in a different place a long time fantastic. ago. Um, so it. yes, this was, uh, this was really an amazing, uh, find and it was meant to be. And as we obviously transcend, we go through phases of feeling at one with ourselves and truly in, in many ways, feeling that complete and that wholeness. And I regard it as the unification, that phase of unification of self, the ego, the self and the shadow forming that complete soul as an individual and really finding that place of bliss. Would you say that bringing that together really allowed you to come together and unify in many ways? Completely. It was astonishing. It was my first weekend, my first training weekend uh, with the College of Sound Healing with Simon Heather. And everything just got better and better and i felt more and more whole and i felt i was tying all the ends together mm -hmm. and i i mentioned that uh to him uh in our in our group sharing and i thought yes this is it this is it you know it's it's really it was a it was a big moment it was the moment of truth um for my life excellent no i love it i love it and again that it comes back to that feeling of bliss i've mentioned many times it's, it's yes, an incredible it feeling isn't it and yes. i i believe that as with the soul pathway like joseph campbell talks about um it being a cycle of our lives and our journey i think the soul pathway is very much another cycle in many ways as well you feel like you had other phases of unification where you felt like you came at one with yourself? I felt that I had a growing sense of unification as I developed spiritually. Mm. I felt that things that were traumatic fell by the wayside because I had no reason to hang on to the traumas and i believe there are spirits of traumas uh and that we can we can work with these spirits and these spirits are hungry and they gnaw at our self-doubt and at our uh difficult transitions and and experiences uh and i was able through shamanic practice to understand how negative thoughts have an energy of their own that's yeah. those are the spirits of trauma and if you let go of them and anyone can do this yeah. you gradually build a self without that negativity and then things are much more harmonious and that for me is living from your place of higher self higher consciousness and in, in many ways the end of your soul pathway but it doesn't end it just continues to transcend but it's living from your higher self i would say i have to connect with my higher self not that it's uh, a chore but it's necessary to connect with the energies of healing spirits 
uh, when I do the sound healing, when I do shamanic practice, you have to get into a place where you're open to those energies to enter your uh, yourself. Definitely. So how would I, if I was to ask you, how do you bring all of your work together now in terms of your sound healing and your, your traditional teachings and learnings, your sound healing work you do today and even the shamanic practice? I work on a one-to-one -one with clients who have physical uh, disabilities, ailments, and we work through the chakra system, cleansing the chakras with sound. And I use singing bowls, I use voice, I use um, different rattles, different drums. Uh, with groups, I focus on a theme. So I've recently done a, a workshop on ancestral healing, and we have worked on epigenetic transmission of trauma, and that is transmission which is outside of the DNA. It comes okay. with um, the morphic field which we inherit but we've been inheriting it through the generations, so it's passed into us. Yeah. And we may be dealing with issues thousands of lifetimes ago. Definitely. Now, that's fantastic. And before I ask you about where we can find out more about yourself and your work, I know you've got an incredible sound healing coming up, or actually, I should say, um, an energy healing for the Earth. Tell us a bit more about, about what you're doing there. Uh, on the 1st of December at 7.30 p.m., please tune in. Um, I'm doing a healing for the earth, and uh, I'm constructing a crystal grid mandala. And I'm using the affirmations of people who are participating in this project and I am reading them out loud as I place the stone into the mandala. And once the evening is over, the, uh, uh, the pieces of paper will be burnt and they will be spread across the fields of uh, East Yorkshire. Fantastic. And you're asking people to share affirmations as well. I do. And if you were to share an affirmation with me, what would you say? <laughs> Earth. <sighs> Definitely. Um, well, I was obviously thinking about this when, when you uh, asked me before. And for me, it's, it would be connect with your own self-love. Um, as when you connect with your own self love, you can then connect with the universal love and the universal love allows you to connect with nature, connect with the animals and bring about healing to the earth as a whole. So allow self love to come through to you as you give that back to mother earth itself. I think that's beautiful. Andy. I think that's really beautiful. Oh, Thank thanks. you. It's a pleasure, and, and I, I, I'm looking forward to tuning in on the first. Um, it's, um, it's going to be a pleasure to, to find out more about that and connect with the energy there, because I think our Earth is in a, in a place of need, and, and we need to send healing and um, create this transformation. I think people are confused. I think people are worried, and people would like to take some action that would have meaning for themselves and to address the problem of this confusion, the violence, the, the disturbance, the insecurities. It's a hard time. And if we can show our love, as you say, for ourselves, for the earth, for each other, it's a start. Definitely. And we've got, always got to start somewhere. Always got to start somewhere. 
So final, final ending questions. Where can we find out more about yourself, your work, and the workshops that you also do as well? Uh, I live in Bridlington, East Yorkshire. I have a website. It's www.sound-heels.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have, uh, uh, you can reach me by email. That's all on the website. Uh, and uh, I work in groups. I work, uh, as I said, one to one. I uh, and I'm always open to any ideas and Fantastic. also looking to serve the community and looking to serve the people who need my help. Fantastic. And for those of you who have tuned in and you're not sure about where to go, all of the links will be below this video anyway. So your website will be there, Samantha. All the links will be available for you and um, be sure to connect with Samantha and her work. She obviously, you obviously got a Facebook page as well. I know yes, I do. Facebook page as well. So with that in mind, I wanted just to finally um, say thank you for joining me today and sharing your journey, your story and your incredible work. Well, thank you, Andy, for making this interview possible. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to speak a little bit more about uh, my work, but it's been great to work with you. Thank you. Likewise. And I did have one more question actually, and I didn't think of this myself. And it would be, what would be your affirmation for your healing um, coming up on the first? Mother Earth, use me as your servant perfect and with that (laughs) i will say thank you very much again very beautiful thank you again all for tuning in and um, i will see you all very soon bye for now